When I sit down on my couch in my living room, my whole smart home knows. And as a result, I turn on the lights that I'd like, turn on my TV, and I even turn off other lights. Plus, you're going to be able to do things like set the temperature in your smart home and create that real ambient experience that you want when you're sitting down to watch TV in the evenings. Let's go. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and I don't take on a lot of DIY projects and that's just because I think we can buy retail versions of products in a lot of cases that do the same things and we spend less time doing them. But I've been really frustrated over the last couple of years with the options in the market for what is called a presence sensor. And that's really what we're talking about today. Even the best one on the market today it requires me to take my phone around and it doesn't connect with all of the hubs and products that I would like it to. So I decided to take this all into my own hands or I guess more appropriately into my behind. Everything I'm going to show you today it's been done before, so I'm not trying to take credit for other people's work, but what I kept finding when I went and did research for this is I couldn't find a lot of the devices that I needed for the projects, and they were kind of built for uh, older ways that smart homes work. So I had to update things a little bit, and that meant that in the end, I was going to tell you you needed four things. The first thing is a SmartThings hub, and I use Samsung SmartThings in my home. Today we purchased the AOTech version of the SmartThings hub. That's what's available on the market today. Number two, you need a contact sensor or something that allows you to use what are called dry contacts. Now, I have used what's called the AOTech door and window sensor 7 Pro. You can see these wires going into them. That's what the dry contacts are. Otherwise, this is a door sensor, so it usually has a magnetic component that tells you if the door is open or closed. Now, the reasons I use this, I'm going to explain in a little bit, but there's some pretty good reasons behind this being chosen. Then you're going to need a pressure mat, and of course all of the links are down below for this, but here's the one I'm using, and some of the critical things about this is it has these two wires coming out, and they went to a chime that was previously connected to this, and whenever I pressed that mat, the chime fired off and I could hear it. So both the two wire component and that chime are really important, although I just cut off the chime. I'll explain in a bit. And the fourth thing you're going to need are some other smart home devices that connect in with Samsung SmartThings. This is a Philips Hue Lite. There's a lot of different things that you can connect to Samsung SmartThings, but that's what you're going to need in order to create this experience that you would like. So why did I use this AOTech Door and Window Sensor 7 Pro? Because it is fairly expensive and there's three reasons off the bat that I'll give you. Number one, it had that dry contact capability. So that gave me the ability to wire in the two wires from the chime into it or from the pressure mat into it. Number two, it has a battery here and that battery should last me at least a year. It's probably going to last me a couple. The third reason is actually how thin this is and it's not an incredibly thin contact sensor that I have here but it is thin enough that I can tuck it away behind cushions, kind of hide it within my couch without it getting ruined. So here's how I started to put this all together. And the first thing is I took that AOTech sensor out of the box and I followed the normal instructions for pairing it to my SmartThings hub. This, there's not a lot to talk about here. You're basically using the application to add a device and then you're going to find this device. And once I had it paired, I kind of tested out that the magnetic component, which is normally how you use these, uh, I just made sure that that was working and then I kind of just set it to the side. I already told you why I used the mat I did, but what I did with that is I cut off the end that was for the connector to the chime and then I stripped the wires just a little bit so the leads were exposed. Then I plugged them into that sensor into the dry contact spaces and I thought, well, it's time to test. So I pressed the mat and nothing happened at all. So I decided to swear. 
But then I remembered that during my research, a number of people had said they had to use what's called a custom device handler, and I couldn't find a custom device handler that would allow me to use on the AOTech Sensor 7 Pro its dry contacts. But what I did find was a custom device handler for the basic version of this sensor that would allow me to use the contacts on that one. So I thought this was worth a try. Now, another reason that I ended up using the pro version of the sensor was because as I was reading here, uh, a number of these people had found that their basic version of the sensor drained down the batteries really quickly. So that's another reason that I ended up using the pro version. But what you have to do to install a custom device handler is you go to what's called the Samsung SmartThings IDE. That's at account.smartthings.com and then you'll log in there with the credentials that you normally do within the SmartThings application. Once you're inside there, you'll head up to device handlers and you're going to choose to create a new device handler. From there, you'll paste the code that actually I've saved on my website for you. So you'll be able to click a link down below in the description that allows you to get that code. You'll copy it and then you will paste it into that area where it says from code. Now, once you've done that, you're going to save and you're going to publish that device handler and that allows your whole SmartThing system to use it. And in order to get our little contact sensor to use this device handler, I had to head into devices and then find my AOTech sensor that I had previously paired. Once inside of the details page there, I hit edit and I choose the device type. Now what you'll find is that your custom device handlers like this are at the bottom of that list. So I scrolled all the way to the bottom and then I found that device handler there. I chose it and then I hit update and now my sensor should be using that. But with Z-Wave devices and these custom device handlers, you need a way to kind of trigger them to take on this new device handler. I couldn't find that in the instructions for the AOTech sensor, so I actually just walked away for a day and let it get basically downloaded to the device. So when I came back, I had for some reason removed the little cables from my contact sensor. I put those back in and sure enough, when I pressed that mat, the contact sensor said it was closed. And when I let go of the mat, it said open. So I had a working device at this point. So I close those little screws on the uh, contact sensor and made sure that my wires were good and stuck in there. With some of the issues I had read with battery drainage, I actually set this to the side for a couple of weeks and I was testing it as a package detection system, but unfortunately, I don't think it's going to work for that. Uh, so I was still testing to make sure that the battery consumption didn't get all crazy on this device. It is perfect, it seems totally fine. Then it became time to test this. So I took the couch cushion off of my couch and became completely horrified with how many crumbs are worse. So I vacuumed and then I set the pressure mat in the space there. Put my couch cushion back over top of it and I kind of tucked that sensor towards the back of my couch to make sure that it wasn't getting squished every time somebody sat on it. The good news was once I put my couch cushion back on there, it wasn't showing that somebody was sitting on the couch, so I had the right kind of pressure mat here. It was going to take enough force, but sure enough, when I sat down on the couch, it went to closed. So, uh, and then when I got back up, it went to open. So at this point, we have a working device sitting on my couch. So let me show you a couple of the automations I made right away. And the first one, you can see it here inside of Samsung SmartThings. If it is between sunset and sunrise, so it's in the evening and it's dark enough to actually need some lighting changes, and I go and sit on the couch, then a number of things are going to happen here. And you can see I'm turning off a lot of lights and 
then I'm turning on a few of my more exciting lights and I'm kind of choosing how bright they are and what, uh, what color that I'm using. Then I basically made the reverse of that inside of Samsung SmartThings. So if I leave the seat so the pressure sensor, or the contact sensor goes to open, then I reverse things. But I do turn on a couple of kitchen lights to make sure that I have lighting in the space when I get up and can actually see. But because I connected my Samsung system with Amazon's voice assistant and I have a Fire TV in my home, this means I can actually turn on my television. So I created a routine over in Amazon's voice assistant application. So you can see that same sensor whenever it goes closed or whenever I am sitting, then I'm going to turn on my television. And for now, I've decided to turn on my twinkly lights because it's the Christmas season. And I have the reverse going on. And of course, we could go and take this three or four steps further. And that's what I did here, guys. Now. Something that's really important is, you know, there's motion sensors back there. And so when I shift around, my lights will turn on behind me. And that can be really annoying when you've kind of set the mood and you have other things that trigger automations in your space. And one of the really great things about Samsung SmartThings is that they allow you to use what are called modes. And what I actually did in the end here is instead of just running those two automations, I used modes to stop things like motion sensors or other automations from occurring and really allow us as a family to get into, you know, that TV or movie watching mode. And if you want to see how I did that, then you're going to need the video that's up on screen right now. It will teach you to use modes within Samsung SmartThings and therefore kind of segment your automations. Otherwise, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.